can I come in? Yes, take your seat. How are you? I'm good, sir. How are you? You can introduce yourself, please, to all of us. Tell us about something about yourself. Uh, sir, my name is Ridai Zahra. I uh, got my primary year education from all over Punjab, uh, which played a pivotal role uh, in uh, shaping the person that I am today. I'm very social, um, very open to meeting new people because of that. Uh, I did my O-levels from uh, Cathedral School. It was a missionary school. Uh, again, it taught me a lot of things, studying uh, with uh, people from all sorts of uh, faiths and um, I did my A-levels from Lahore Grammar School and then my bachelor's from Lahore School of Economics. Uh, in my free time, I like spending time with my dogs. I have a lot of them. And I also like traveling whenever I get the time and money. So, why you are you looking for the civil services? Um, <clears throat> sir, um, two, three primary reasons. Uh, first is, uh, sir, I believe um, because um, I have looked up to my father and my brothers um, and growing up I've seen them in service and I've seen them do a lot of good. Uh, therefore, I wanted to uh, do the same for the people and uh, to do the same that they did for the people. Uh, second is that I believe that uh, you know, after uh, once you're, it's like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Once you've fulfilled your physiological and your social needs, you climb up to uh, self-achievement. And I think uh, there's no better achievement than competitive examination. Uh, so there's a need to you know feel good about yourself and to get achieve something in life. Uh, that was another reason I wanted to uh, join civil service. Um, uh, that's primary two reasons. Yes. Sheikh, do you have been in? Uh, law business. You have done this law business economics also? Uh, in A levels, yes, sir. A -level. in my advanced. And marketing in your graduation. My graduation, yes, sir. What is the size of GDP? Pakistan, what is? Um, sir, if you would allow me to take a guess, uh, I cannot recall the exact amount. It was a, um, close to, uh, sir, I believe, uh, I'm sorry. Sir, sure, sure. How do you see the economic future of Pakistan keeping in view with the current scenario? Sir, I believe that uh, there are a lot of challenges being faced by Pakistan today and uh, we have a lot of constraints, especially after COVID in 2020, we do not have a lot of opportunities to grow in a lot of areas. Uh, the trade is restricted at the moment. Uh, also, we because we have been going to um, uh, IMF, uh, for this was the third consecutive year uh, for Pakistan, third consecutive term for Pakistan in which we were going to IMF. So we also have to follow their um, plans and how they want uh, the structural adjustment programs, for example, which we have to follow if uh, we are to take loan from them. So we have a lot of constraints and I believe there are a lot of challenges. However, uh, I think we are, uh, at least in the last quarter, there have been some growth and there have been some uh, positive um, uh, uh, in terms of trade as well, in terms of export and we are going towards positive growth and uh, as compared to other countries uh, which are going in negative growth for their exports. Uh, I believe uh, that uh, in the coming year things are going to stabilize to some extent after uh, once uh, the COVID uh, thing goes away and uh, once Pakistan uh, needs to work a little bit harder in terms of its uh, economics. Uh, but yes. Now there is a criticism on CPAC that uh, it is a debt trap for Pakistan because we have to pay about $6.7 billion, which is less than what we have to pay to the IMF. Do you think it is so? Uh, sir, I believe that it is not a debt trap. Uh, I do believe that there are no black and whites in this. There's a lot of gray area. So when we say that we, have, we owe a lot to IMF, that is absolutely true. And considering our economic situation, it is not going to be easy repaying that sort of debt. Uh, because our uh, foreign currency reserves are uh, not in a great place right now. However, so I also believe that Pakistan, um, this is a great opportunity for Pakistan to grow in the first place. We do not have a lot of uh, projects, this, this level, massive scale projects in Pakistan available right now that can give Pakistan the opportunity to grow its exports to such a large extent. Uh, so I believe that though uh, the uh, giving the loans back is going to be very challenging for Pakistan, but if CPEC was not available, 
available. I think the uh, opportunity available for Pakistan uh, to um, work with China uh, so closely, uh, the port that connects us, uh, uh, the Gawadar port, is a great project. We have our uh, 10 SE, um, SEZs, uh, the, our special economic zones. Uh, so all of this is an opportunity for Pakistan to grow, and growth is the first step in repaying the loans. Uh, so I think uh, it, it, it cannot be called a debt debt trap. It can be call, called a challenge uh, in repaying the loan. However, debt trap, I believe, sir, is a, uh, a, a stretch. I would call it a stretch, yes. It's, it's an opportunity for Pakistan for growth. There is a perception that there is a shift of Pakistan government foreign policy, and we are tilting more to a new block than the previous one where, where we used to be, say, Saudis and US, but now we are tilting to another block. Can you make your comments on that? Sir, I believe uh, it has, if we look at historically, pa Pakistan has always had a very hyphenated foreign policy from the very beginning, since 1947, we have always had a tilt towards United States particularly. Uh, after that, we also had a tilt towards uh, Saudi Arabia. There was always this geostrategic partnership between Saudi Arabia and Pakistan, and we were uh, exporting arms and uh, these things. Uh, and therefore, uh, we were also taking uh, a lot of uh, funding from uh, Saudi Arabia, so we always had a natural tilt towards that. However, in the least recent times, we have been seeing that because of CPAC, CPAC can be one reason. Also, there is um, uh, when Pakistan joined the Shanghai Corporation Organization in 2017, uh, they have have been some sort of uh, coalition with uh, not just China uh, in terms of trade, but also uh, with Russia as well. Uh, and uh, I believe uh, uh, now Pakistan is dehyphenating its foreign policy towards not just Russia, China, and Iran bloc, but also we're moving towards uh, Turkey and we're moving towards Malaysia, which I think is very good for Pakistan because uh, associating with just one country, uh, Saudi Arabia, or just uh, United States is not very favorable for Pakistan in terms that we can be uh, uh, isolated, diplomatically isolated, if we just stick to one or two countries. So I think now that we are moving towards Malaysia, Asia, Turkey, and other countries, and associating with the, the bigger bloc, I think it will be very favorable for Pakistan. I also believe that we should not take sides in this particular scenario. Like siding with just Russia or China bloc would not be very favorable for, for Pakistan, or completely leaving United States Saudi bloc, because we uh, have worked very closely with Saudi, and we have worked very closely with United States over the past six, seven decades. So I believe we need to keep a neutral approach when it comes to uh, our foreign policy, and we need to associate with our, ourselves with each and every country uh, when it comes to our geoeconomics. Uh, as Pakistan is struggling econo economically, we need to focus on trade with each and every country rather than picking sides or picking blocks. Okay, thank you. What strategy will you propose for uh, the better economic development of the country? Um, Sir, I uh, would first like to apologize. I'm not an economics student uh, uh, for the last at least six, seven years. So I cannot go into nitty gritties of economics. However, sir, first I believe that there are certain things. For example, I believe that uh, in order for our um, for our foreign uh, exchange reserves first need to be considered because if we're not paying for it imports our imports for example oil which is uh, a very big uh, determinant in uh, our the growth of our economy if we cannot pay for our uh, imports we can, we cannot actually sustain our economic model so we need to foreign on our foreign ex currency resource through um, uh, investments, uh, through uh, whatever chance we can get to get something in Pakistan. That would be our first step. Uh, the second would be our export infrastructure. We need to uh, increase our um, uh, revenue through uh, uh, improving our export infrastructure and increasing our exports so we can actually um, uh, have a more um, better exports and better uh, economic conditions in Pakistan. Which are the major sectors which contribute towards the GDP? Um, sir, uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm not fully aware of that, but if you would allow me to take a guess, I would say textile uh, must be uh, one of the leading uh, our export uh, because we are exporting cotton and also, we are also exporting manufactured cloth in Pakistan. Um, I have read uh, dried dates, uh, dried, no, I'm sorry, I would not. Services, industry, Agriculture and 
and foreign remittances. Foreign remittances uh, is a big source of foreign exchange to Pakistan. Uh, what do you think could be done to improve its flow towards Pakistan? Uh, Make it still better? Uh, sir, I believe that uh, one of uh, our highest foreign remittances are from uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, UAE uh, and these countries. And I think uh, we need to, uh, I would start at the base level, sir, that in, need to, in order to improve remittances, we first have to send people abroad. And for that, we need to improve uh, the skill set in people that we have here. So we need to uh, have more vocational training centers and the sort of training that is required to send people abroad so they can actually be a productive member member of uh, uh, their uh, services and they, they can then therefore send uh, uh, money to Pakistan. So I believe uh, it starts uh, at uh, teaching people the re relevant <coughs> skills at this level that they can be more productive. Okay. How serious is the crime of money laundering? Uh, sir, I believe that it, uh, at least right now, Pakistan is in a big trouble because of this, uh, economically as well as... Um, uh, if, what is money laundering? Sir, money laundering is uh, illegal transfer of money uh, uh, through uh, informal channels. Uh, it's, uh, it has three steps. It's um, uh, placement, layering, and then integration. Yes. That is correct. That is correct. Placement and layering, that is... That is how money is how you hide your money conceal your dirty money that is money laundering so sending money abroad is not money laundering the very uh, act of yours that you're trying to in order to hide your dirty money money which you have earned through corruption or through crime what you do in, in that regard that is money you open bank accounts you uh, you see you buy property Benami properties, you buy land, so that is money laundering, washing your dirty money. So, so coming, uh, uh, you are answering my question, how serious is this? Sir, I believe that uh, it, uh, right now, Pakistan needs to take some drastic steps to curb this because uh, we have been in the FATF grey list for quite a while now and that is proving detrimental for Pakistan, not just in terms of economics but also in terms of uh, the Pakistan's uh, image uh, abroad. Uh, and that has also hindered uh, investments for Pakistan in uh, here. Uh, I believe that, sir, uh, Pakistan has been taking some steps and Pakistan has been able to uh, at least uh, take care of uh, uh, 21 out of the 27 uh, items in the IMF list and we are only left with six or seven and we have to find time till February to do that. So I believe that uh, it has been a big problem for Pakistan but, but Pakistan is taking the necessary steps in the right direction to actually curb money laundering and I believe that with a few more measurements and maybe introducing a few more bills uh, that are aimed and directed at uh, uh, Curbing this menace would uh, prove to be beneficial and... Okay, okay. Iran has increased the uh, rate of its uranium en enrichment. It has raised it to 20, almost, very uh, nearing 20% from 3. Why, why Iran is doing that? Sir, I believe one of the reasons would be after uh, 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 President Trump's unilateral withdrawal from the JCPOA, uh, Iran was not left uh, there were a lot of sanctions on Iran again. So once the treaty was, the whole pact was violated, Iran did not have a lot to work with in that particular situation since it was adhering to the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action till uh, this time. And it did when it was unilaterally withdrawn, uh, Iran, it was not... Um, it was not Iran's, uh, Iran was no longer bound to actually follow uh, the uh, uranium enrichment uh, numbers anymore. Uh, therefore, Do you I think, think Iran will be able to uh, make atomic bomb, bomb with that level of enrichment? Uh, sir, I, I, I do not know the physics of it, but I believe that uh, Iran is going in that direction, but there are a lot of national and international pressures. Uh, Iran's leading scientist, physicist who was working on the plan was assassinated uh, a month or two back, I'm not exactly sure uh, date, but um, 
there are a lot of uh, hindrances in the plan. So I'm not sure if Iran would be able to go ahead with it. And also uh, uh, the new president of uh, United States, Joe Biden, has committed that he, he would enter the JCPOA again and uh, intend to work with Iran in this scenario. So I believe that uh, it might not be entirely possible for Iran in the coming months to actually uh, make her. What is red tapeism? Uh, so red tapeism is um, a lot of paperwork involved or uh, uh, when it comes to actually uh, going ahead with if we talk in terms of establishing new businesses so red tapeism would be difficulty when it comes to paperwork and all the uh, steps that are involved in this which makes it difficult uh, for uh, a, a process to uh, smoothly function. Okay, one uh, small question from the history of Pakistan. What is the importance of Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan and Aligarh movement in the history of Pakistan? Uh, sir, uh, Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan played a pivotal role, especially when it comes to uh, the education system and the education for Muslims in that time, uh, which was a, 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 a factor that played a part in uh, establishment of Pakistan. So before Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan started his efforts toward educating the Muslims, Muslims were mainly not in the center uh, stage when it comes to politics in the, uh, in the subcontinent as well as in other scenarios. Muslims were lagging behind in every situation and Muslims were taking uh, the center stage in terms of government jobs and other uh, places. Uh, so when Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan uh, came in, he, uh, he created this awareness among the people of subcontinent about learning uh, English, about uh, learning languages, about getting uh, the education, not just the education, uh, Islamic education, but also the Western education so they can compete with the, not only Hindus, but also the foreigners who were working there. So I believe that was uh, the first like, foundation that uh, uh, Muslims uh, actually, the first step in actually uh, gaining their dreams and getting them uh, towards uh, that dream of <laughs> Okay, how can we control gender-based violence in Pakistan? So, uh, gender-based violence is a big problem in Pakistan right now. And uh, Pakistan is having a hard time curbing that because it is, uh, it is often, it's, it's often garbed in uh, this religious uh, thing as well that uh, it's somehow justified in terms of that. And Pakistan is taking some steps in that direction to actually uh, uh, curb gender-based violence. We have, in the last 10 years, uh, 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 taken up a lot of bills. We have uh, acid prevention bill, we have a Zena bill, we have also have uh, harassment at workplace laws. Uh, we are going in the right direction when it comes to gender based violence. However, I also believe that there is a difference when it comes to these laws on paper and in practical. There are still a lot, uh, there is a lot lacking on the practical level. Uh, a lot of cases are not reported because of uh, honor. There are a lot of, uh, uh, there is a lot of hassle when it is involved when it comes to reporting these cases, there are a lot of um, shame associated with gender-based violence and domestic violence because of which women don't necessarily report. So I believe uh, on paper there needs to be some more amendments, but I also believe that the practicality needs to be focused on how we can actually promote women from coming out, how we can actually increase the, uh, women uh, to report these crimes and then take decisive measures so they are not hindered, when other women are not hindered to actually go ahead with it. What is a decent work and uh, what is the contribution of a decent work in economic growth? So I have to apologize, I'm not aware of that. I will read on it uh, later though, I'm sorry. Okay, no problem. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> so, Reda, uh, tell, tell me something about Khushab. Uh, sir, uh, Khushab uh, is uh, very different from other districts in a way that it has uh, a lot of different uh, land features. So Khushab, if we start from um, Sumsa Kesar, Khushab has mountains. Uh, it's a mountainous area. Then if we come down, there is Mukhar, which is called the mountain base. Uh, if we go further, we have a uh, uh, river Jihlam to Duchi passing. Uh, so it has, it's also, uh, uh, there is also river side there. And when we move towards uh, my Pesi, which is Nurpur, it's a desert. So if we, f if we uh, actually see this district, we have mountainous area, we have a desert, we have a river bed, uh, and it cannot be seen in a lot of districts. Have you ever lived there? I, uh, sir, I go there very often. But you never lived there? Uh, not for long. 
What are the six P's of marketing? Uh, sir, uh, product, price, uh, product, price, placement, promotion. Um, I'm sorry, sir, I'm not aware of it. In hobbies and sports, you have written animals. Uh, would you make us uh, understand what is this hobby, animals? Uh, sir, I, um, I have a lot of animals at home, so that takes up a lot of my time. I also rescue animals. Uh, uh, don't you think that there is an uh, appropriate word to describe it? Keeping pets. Animals itself can't be described as a hobby. Uh, sir, uh, yes, you're absolutely right. Okay, your favorite president in the history of United States and why? Uh, sir, um, I would say um, uh, Sir, I would like to go with uh, uh, Roosevelt Which Roosevelt? Uh, uh, Franklin Roosevelt sir. Why? Uh, sir, I believe that he took uh, he did a lot for his own country and in that terms after the Great Depression of 1929 he took a lot of steps uh, the New Deal uh, the first and the second New Deal that actually brought uh, uh, United States out of the Great Depression and I know that World War One. What were the main features of New Deal? Uh, so, uh, uh, one of the most uh, major and important was the Social Security Act of the uh, 1935 uh, which is still applicable to this point in which uh, he established that it was the state's responsibility to actually uh, take care of its citizens in terms of health and education. What, what do you know about Iran-Contra Gate affair? Uh, sir, I'm sorry, I have not heard of that. Okay, coming towards your business administration measures, what is the conclusion or the major findings of Hawthorne studies? Uh, sir, I cannot recall it at this point. Okay. Thank you. Sir. Okay, let's conclude our this interview session and we can go for the debriefing if you like. Yes, sir. If you have got any question, you can ask. I know, sir. Thank you. Okay. Erida, I think you are very good. Uh, your communication skills are very fine. You are articulate. Uh, you are confident. You are intelligent. I think you are very good, but you are competing with the very good from Punjab. So you have to keep it up and you need to improve your knowledge. And uh, when is your interview? So my interview will be April, May, I'm in the second phase. So you have, you are lucky that we are here today. So this is a baseline where, where you are. So you need to work very hard. Because when you come to the Punjab, you will come to the so they are the best. They come to coffee and they come to the institutions. So you have to, be very, you have to work very hard. This is my advice. Today we place you in a very good position, Absar. I think it is more or less the same. Our uh, knowledge is better. Kare. Uh, Baki, I think uh, rest is okay. Fine. So, है ना इस किस्म के जो जो topics हैं, मतलब rule of law, sustainable development, climate change, इस किस्म के जो हैं topics ये जरा अच्छी तरह जो है ना अब ये जो मैंने जो आपसे पूछा था कि जो है ना कि इसमें decent work जो है it is one of the goals of sustainable developments. The 17 goals hai na, usme se one of the goals is jo hai wo ye tha ke, decent work for economic growth. So basically, this is a Agar nahi padhi hui, to thoda sa refresh kar. Ji sir, acha. Aapko thoda sa debriefing session detail mein chahiye. You can have it with Murid or me or anyone else. Ek to aap, throughout the interview, you sat with cross legs like this, okay? which is not a positive, straight bathe. Dusra thoda sa, I know it's your natural, aap bohut tez bolti hai. Ab us tez bolne mein, you used six or seven self-coined words, jo dictionary mein kahi nahi milenge kisi ko. Okay, doesn't matter. That's the that's the basic purpose you came here for. Eye contact up beach mein lose karti hai. Ab bada acha point, acche tarikhe se convey kar rahi hoti hai. Beach mein jab aapka thought process tootta hai, to then you start staring towards uh, ceiling or something like that. 
اس کو کوشش کریں اوائڈ کریں اور آپشنلز آپ کے ویک ہیں ٹھیک ہے دے آر کنسیڈریبلی ویک تو باقی یہی ہے دیٹ سیٹ تو یہ جو ہے نا دس پروفائل یہ آپ کا انٹرویو انہیں ایٹی پرسینٹ انٹرویو انہیں چیزوں پہ ہوگا رائٹ فرام نئی مردا یہاں سے شروع ہوگا اور پھر اینڈ تک جائے گا آپ کے نام پہ بھی بہت بات ہوگی ہاں یو نیڈ ٹو بی ویری تھارو آن دیز پوائنٹس بیکاز دس از اے وہ وہاں اسی کی ویریفیکیشن ہو رہی ہوتی ہے ٹھیک ہے نا ادروائز یو آر گڈ ماشاء اللہ باقی آپ کو ایڈوائز مل گئی ہے ٹھیک ہے نا بیسٹ آف لک